Let me show you what my replica looks like. This is my replica Alvin Clark. Uh, it's an approximately a number four. I'm not sure about the scale. This is a real honest to goodness Alvin Clark number three mount. Um, so it's it, and you can see it, you can see how rusty it is. Well, maybe you can't see that in the video. Anyway, it's pretty rusty here. It was so rusted that I had to paint it, and I tried my best to get the uh, at least a good match to the original paint. But uh, anyhow, I had to had to paint it. But this is an original Alvin Clark, and I'll show you uh, in close-ups. I'll show you how this goes together. And I was able to guess pretty closely as to what it would look like. But I really malfunctioned in a couple of places. For one thing, as you'll see, this thing is too long. This thing should be able to swing all the way up to a vertical position. I was completely unaware of that when I made this. I probably made this too long. I got carried away with this. this uh, I fell in love with this piece here, so I got a little nuts with it. And I probably made it too long. It should be a little shorter and squatter. And that way the thing could sit up. Um, there's also a problem because I had a nut inside here so that this would couple on and could be removed from the um, tripod head. Um, now the way the number three Clark is made is it's permanently attached to the tripod head. This is the tripod head. It's permanently attached there. But anyway, I thought you might enjoy seeing that comparison. The slant here is a little different and I'm pretty sure that that's uh, an accurate reflection of the difference between, a, say, a number four, number five Alvin Clark, and these number threes, which were a little bit smaller. But also, I probably missed the proportions a little. This is not quite right. And I knew this rounded part here, that, that was going to be tough to capture, so I didn't capture that. Also, this piece here, this beautiful, lovely cast brass piece, I was not able to quite get the same exact thing. I just sort of came close on those. But you can see, I, uh, you know, superficially, it's not that bad. And the scale is probably about right. It'd be fun to compare this with a real honest to goodness Alvin Clark number four. I'll never be able to afford be able to get my hands on one of those. Uh, anyway, so I'll give you some close-ups and show you how this all goes together. Uh, first of all, before we get started, I had to make some very special screwdrivers. These little tiny screws, these are old time screws, and they have little tiny heads, and I had to grind and file a couple of screwdrivers, especially to fit those. And this is a standard quarter inch 20, oh, oh, it's not a standard quarter inch 20. It's not even a standard quarter inch 28. It's something that hasn't been made for who knows how long. Quarter inch, 24 threads per inch. Good luck trying to buy one of those. You can't buy one. I could probably make one on my lathe at great pain, taking a long time to make something that replicates that. Anyway, luckily I haven't lost any of those, so I don't have to make one. Um, all right, so let's let me show you how this goes together. Here's the little uh, little plate that says patent, January third, nineteen ninety. Sorry, eighteen ninety nine. Pardon my mistake there. And that goes right on here. And I, I tried to leave this as original as I could stand to leave it. The rust on this thing was so bad that I had to paint it. I, I, I had no choice. I had to strip off the, the rust and what little paint was there and, uh, and repaint it. And I just repainted it with some good uh, rust kind of paint. Anyhow, so this slaps right on there. And that's pretty much uh, original patina. And you can even see the little circles where the uh, bolt went on there. So that's pretty much patina that's, uh, I'm quite certain, or original. Now let me show you how this goes together. This is the tripod head. So the legs go right there. And then these two things, these actually attach quite semi-permanently right there. And the screws go through here like that. 
And of course, in between, this thing is captured. Now this will have the uh, right ascension axis going right, right through it like that. Uh, so inside it's a little tricky and what you have to have is something inside like so that allows the axis to go through but cleverly will also allow this thing to turn. So let's see if I can assemble that for you and show you how it looks when it's assembled. It's really quite pretty in it. Let's take a look at this and I'll show you how this assembles if I can do it. First thing is you have to trap this. Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention that these have some very nice little stamps. I'm not sure if you can make that up. But right there is a little 12 with a pip by it, indicating that it goes, this has a 12 on it, but no pip. This has a 12 on it with a pip right there. So this goes there, right? And I'm, it seemed to fit pretty well the other way, but I'm going to do it the way it was intended. This thing is captured in here, and this goes there. And you want to be able to have some way of locking down those, um, those wing nuts on the outside. So this ties that down and still allows the axle to go through there. Yeah. The, uh, So that works like so. That all captures together just like that. Goes right on there. Let me put this together. That's going to go there. This was designed by Carl Lund London or Lundin. Anyway, he uh, he designed it. I think this was the last, after the last of the Alvin Clark family had actually died. It was around 1899. So here we have the whole thing assembled. And it's going to be a simple matter, a simple matter if you have the correct screwdriver. <laughs> it's going to be a simple matter, it's actually this one, to screw this down, right? There's also another bolt that comes in from the bottom. I don't think I'll put all this together right now. But that just gives you an idea of how this whole thing works. And it's a simple, uh, real simple, elegant, actually quite an elegant mount. Four simply beautiful castings. These castings. And the machine work on this thing. I can't do this right now. Anyway, the machine work on this thing is just beautiful. Very nice, very precise. Hard to believe they could machine things as precisely as they did. In the lens cell, for the Alvin Clark lens cell, although there's three little raised areas on, on the inside of the lens cell uh, to hold the lenses on both the outer and the inner. And it, they're very, very finely, very delicately machined. I'd have a hard time duplicating that. Uh, I'm not sure quite how they did it. It was clearly done with a, um, well, looks like it was done with a vertical milling machine. Um, anyway, very, very precise. So anyway, that's the way that all works. Now this is all attached, pretty, per, per, pretty firmly attached. So there's no way to adjust the, uh, you, the only way you can adjust this for aiming at north and south to get polar alignment is by actually moving the tripod around. And I'm not sure if the big ones were adjustable uh, the way I made my replica. I think they were so that you could actually, you know, this would be separate on a separate plate that was then attached to the top of the tripod. Uh, so that you could then adjust it that way. And of course you can set this for any, any latitude. And uh, just loosen those two things up, adjust it for the latitude, lock it down, boom, you're all set, good to go. Like so.